So, Alec Baldwin, famous <laughs> actor and presenter, <laughs> welcome to my radio yeah. show. Thank you so Here much. You're very welcome. Here we are on Sirius Radio, on the Beatles channel. Yes. Well, it's my great pleasure to be here. Uh -huh. The first thing I was wondering about you and John was, you know, it, he seemed like somebody when you see him on footage, and the footage begins when you guys become famous, and I want to know is the early John seems to be having a ball. He seems mm. to have it so he's so playful and mm. jokey in front of the press, and he seems to be having fun. Mm. Was he like that before you became? Was it just fun for him and for yeah, all of you? I mean, you know, yeah, we were kids from Liverpool with uh, about the f best thing we could do would be to play music. Um, and so we had fun. Um, and John was a uh, very witty guy. And so we had a lot of fun together, you know. And we'd, you know, we'd, we'd give, him, give as good as we got kind of thing. You know, he'd, he'd like insult me, so I'd insult him back. <laughs> And you know, we, like brothers, it's kind of normal guys, young guys relationship. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he was he was a very fun guy. Uh, like I say, you know, lots of good jokes and everything, and uh, uh, which was very good when we came to be on stage and you'd be making an announcement, and John would want to do a funny announcement. You know, you kind of leave the serious stuff yeah. to me, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to play a ballad now, yeah. or whatever. And he goes, yeah, the rest yeah. of you can rattle your jewelry." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. With the queen. Um, yeah, so we were having a ball. Um, it was all new to us, and everything was like special. You know, being asked for your autograph was like wow. You know, now when you get sort of very famous for a long time, it gets to be a bit. Oh, no, I'm, I'm having a meal with my wife. Do you mind? You know, and you, yeah. but then it would be, yeah. yeah. How many do you want? How many? You want? <laughs> how much paper do you have? You know, yeah. Well, your kids want, might want one. Um, no, so it was just uh, he, he was a great guy. I mean, I was always a fan of John. John was one of those guys you you look up to. He, you know, he's just had a way about him. He was um, pretty cool, and I was just that bit younger. And so in teenage years, you look up to that kind mm -hmm. of guy just because he's a little bit older. Yeah, it's a big difference. And it makes a big difference those days, yeah. As you get older, a year and a half is like nothing. You know, a 41-year-old to a 40-year-old, that's, that's no, no problem. But, you know, 16-year-old and a 14-year-old, kind of 14 and a half, whatever. But, yeah, you know, he was... He was Great fun and very interesting, fascinating guy. So, you know, I just really was happy to hang out with him. And the big thing that made John special for me, going a little bit off the point, um, was that, you know, other than the fact that he was just a fun person, was that I would say to some people, um, you know, what they'd say, what do you do? What are your hobbies? What do you like? You know, and I just said, well, you know, I do this, I do that. And I, I write songs. I've written a couple of songs. And people would go, oh, yeah, okay. What sports do you like? And they'd gloss over that because nobody was much interested. Oh, you write a couple of songs? Yeah, all right. But John was the first person who I said, well, you know, written a couple of songs. He said, oh, so have I. So that was a great kind of glue mm -hmm. to the both of us. It was like, well, well what have you written, you know? And we got together and showed each other our words and uh, then started saying, well, maybe we could make one up together, you know. So we did. Which was? Uh, one after 909, for instance. You was know, one of the first ones you did? That was one of the first ones we did, yeah. Wow, well, I didn't know that. Saw us standing there. I had that. Right. And I showed him that. And uh, we, we kind of co-wrote it. I think I, I'm not sure if I had it all finished, but I had the idea. Um, but my second line wasn't great. It was, she was just 17. She'd never been a beauty queen. And the way she looked, really. And we kind of, I said, I'm not sure about this beauty queen thing. And he said, no, no, that's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're thinking, what can we do? What can she was just 17. Ian, Ian, Ween, Queen. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah, that's it. Great. You know, put that down. She write that. Of course, it's a much better lyric. One, two, three, five. That was one of the very early ones. When we were at the, we got uh, invited uh, by President Obama to go to the White House. And uh, Jerry Seinfeld did a bit. And I'm in the audience with the, with the press, you know. And Jerry says, Paul, you know, he's, for instance, your songs, you know, it's very, he says, you have a song here. She was just 17. You know what I mean? Well, I'm not sure we do know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a couple of others that have never really surfaced because they weren't very good. Mm. There was one that was called Just Fun. You know that our love was just fun. Um, the day that our friendship begun. Well, there's no, there's no blue moon that I can see. There's never been in history because our love was just fun. <laughs> and it's like, you know, we didn't offer that one up to George Martin. What was the ratio back then, to the extent you can remember, mm -hmm. of what made it on record and what went into the bin? Well, Did you have a lot of songs that didn't make it? Yeah, no, it was really only those first few that we'd sort of messed around with. Too Bad About Sorrows was kind of like... Too bad about sorrows. You know, and it, was, it wasn't very good. So we, we even dismissed it. So we didn't even offer those up. And just once we'd written Love Me Do, we thought, well, that's a bit better. One after 909, we didn't really offer that up until much later when we were playing around ready to just sort of do the uh, roof concert we m remembered some of those and thought yeah we could do that one you know but the ratio was pretty good i mean most of what we wrote we did interesting yeah when you write music with someone uh and of, of course with the results that the two of you had um when you write music uh in that combination as everybody knows, some songs are more you, some songs are more him. You contribute to each other's songs. John and me had like an electricity just born of the fact that we'd grown up together and we'd done a million things together. You know, um, as kids, we lived near each other. All of us were like only a bus ride away uh, from each other. So we'd hang and we'd we could like even go on holidays together, you know. I, John and I uh, used to hitchhike a bit, and George and I hitchhiked, and we. So that that brings you together, and um, so yeah, we we had quite a sort of firm bond, and when you started writing together, um, we developed together. So we did okay songs, pretty good songs. Rather good songs, very good songs, super songs or whatever, you know. <laughs> and we were very lucky. It kept going. And, you know, we ended up just knowing each other so well that that we could just to and fro. You know, I'd go, it's getting better all the time. And he'd go, couldn't get much worse. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> you've got to know someone to do that. Right. I mean, if he was a little bit shy of me or a little bit embarrassed, he'd never throw that line in. Right. But we knew each other just so well that it was like, I mean, he knew that I might, might laugh and say, no way, in which that would have been okay. But of course, I loved that. That was John. And that was the great thing. That was what made us good together, is that we were sort of two sides of the same coin, you know? Um, now, who's heads and who's tails? Um, I don't know. I think John's thing was that um, he was a, a very fun guy, but um, he'd had quite a difficult life. So that uh, people who've had difficult lives shield themselves because mm -hmm. they don't want to get hurt, you know. And um, I think John had a lot of that. So... I think it was a great thing in the music. I think help, yeah. I need somebody. I was going to mention that, yeah. I think that's great. A, a, to, a cry, even. It's, yeah. It's a, yeah, it is literally a cry for help kind of thing, but um, we didn't know that. 
looking back on it, he even said, you know, yeah, it was, it was a crime. But um, it, it just, I think, lent a great edge to the group, to the music. Um, whereas I would be going one way, John would be going another way, and George would be helping us by going another way. And then Ringo would be sort of the rock behind us. Um, I, I say to people, you know, the, the song, uh, I brought it in, uh, And I Love Her. I want to roll my love, you know. And George Martin was sort of saying, it'd be nice to have a little intro on this. is live on the session. But I didn't have an intro. I just had the chords and the song. Um, and so he said, George, can you come up with something? So George just went, thought about it, and went, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that song without that? You know, so the crucial little um, additions that guys would put on, but you, you have to strip it back and think, um, yeah, yeah, what would it be like without it? Um, so we could all offer things, you know. And John's thing, I was very happy in my childhood till my mum died when, when I was about 14. Um, I was very lucky. Our family was like just a bundle of fun. And everyone seemed nice. All the uncles and aunties, when they came around or we went to their place, it was a laugh. You know, always telling jokes. And, um, you know, my parents, you know, just just got on with it. They just, you know, they both worked, didn't have much money. But um, the atmosphere in the house was great. I, I grew up thinking all families are like this. It's nice, isn't it? You know, everyone's got lovely families and stuff. And then I, I sort of learned it, it wasn't true. There were some people who had quite broken families, and you hear more and more about it as you get older, you know. Um, and it turns out with John's family, well, I didn't really put it together, but he told me, oh, yeah, you know, my dad left home when I was three, and I never saw him until he was famous. And then the dad, there was a, a journalist uh, called Don Short, uh, who worked for one of the newspapers and who we knew. And he rang John and said, oh, your dad is in a, a pub just down the road. For, he's working in a pub. He's cleaning up or something. He's working. And he's, you know, uh, he's there and would like to meet you if you would like to. So John went down and sort of saw him and stuff. But that was the first time. But by then we were famous. And, you know, obviously it had that little edge thing, like, sure. is he just showing up because he wants money? Did they reunite regularly or no? No. 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 He didn't want it. I, I think they, you know, they spoke to each other, saw each other a few times, but it sort of drifted apart again. Um, so that was one thing, that his dad was like that. And then John had gone to live... Um, with his aunt Mimi, Mary, mm -hmm. who everyone called Mimi. Um, and no, not with his mother. No, that was, no, 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 the, the, not with his mom. No, his mom was considered by the family at that time, who was a slightly posh family, I always thought. Right. Um, they thought, no, 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 Mimi will raise him properly, and he can't live with his mom. His mother's not a reputable woman. No, no, no. And... Um, so that was a tragedy right there. And Mimi was Mimi who was whose sister, the father or the mother? Mother. It was the mother's sister. Yeah. Got it. His mother was Julia, and so uh, uh, the sister was Mimi. And John went to live with Mimi, who would raise him properly. And then his mom goes and gets run over, killed outside the house, the Aunt Mimi's house. She came to visit one night. Tragic thing. John loved her so much and she's walking home and a, a, a police car I think it was an off-duty policeman ran her over bang and she's dead how old was he when that happened he was about 16 so, so he still I think. hadn't made it yeah no he still hadn't made it and so he's but, an orphan essentially by the time he yeah. gets to become famous well exactly well exactly I hadn't thought of it like that but that's no. true that's it he was an orphan um but we did used to go, because I lived somewhere near his mum. Was, I was in a slightly poorer part of town, not massively, but just no. a little, like a level down right. from where they were. Literally, they were a little bit up on a hill, and we were down a bit. And in that area, 
Julia, who wasn't very well off and had married um, a guy called Mr. Dykins, uh, who we used to make terrible fun of, you know, um, had lived somewhere near me anyway. So me and John would go and visit her. And so walking there and walking back after the visit was very uh, revealing. Uh, and John loved her, really idolized her, you know. And I think, you know, it was always a terrible pity that he couldn't just live with her. So that was his life. John and I both had tragedies. So again, it was kind of another bond. And we, you needed a place to put it. All these tragedies came out in his later work, you know, um, and, and towards the end of his work, they came out obviously, more obvious than help is a nice song. It could just be about someone saying, help, you know, I love you, but help me. Um, but later, you know, they are really cries for help and are very anguished. But I thought that was great about John. It's very brave. I say to people now, kind of looking back on the whole thing, uh, I realize that uh, the, the three others of us in the group were massive fans of John because he was that kind of guy. He was, I mean, we always used to get asked, who's the leader of the group? And I'd go, me. And John would go, no, me. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. It, I, it should be me. I'm, I'm much more intelligent than you. <laughs> you know, no, I'm more intelligent, you know, whatever. But, uh, I mean, I had to admit, we really, that it was sort of John, just his personality was a leader's personality. You know. Luckily, it didn't matter. Uh, we were we all had an equal vote, and um, so it always worked out without worrying about that. When it started to unravel, did you kind of see that coming? Did you think he wasn't a guy that was a long-distance runner and could do this for a long, long time? Yeah, no, I think, you know, uh, without blaming her, it was the arrival of Yoko. Right. He fell in love with Yoko, and he had to go another way. Um, you know, John had come our way. We'd all come each other's ways. Um, but when he met Yoko, she was so different... And the two of them were such a sort of tight little unit that they were, she was showing him new things in life and a new kind of life. And John had always had strong women in his life. Auntie Mimi was strong. He needed them. Uh, and so he liked that. He liked someone uh, strong. And um, I, I remember his, his wife, first wife, Cynthia, saying to me once, you know, confidentially sort of saying, um, you know, all I want is for John to come home and put on his slippers and <laughs> have a drink, <laughs> you know, have a little drink, and smoke a pipe or whatever, you know. And it was like, I remember, I'm not sure if I said, you, are you kidding me? You're never going to get that with John. He's you just the wrong guy. Put the wrong guy there. But... Um, yeah, so when Yoko came along, uh, she was very influential, and he was very happy to be influenced. It, it caused a bit of problems with us till we sort of realized that he had every right yeah. to do what he was doing because he was yeah. in love, yeah. and you don't just do what everyone expects if you're in love. And he was, uh, he was really sort of um, mad keen on her. And he, he also had quite a kind of um, surreal side to his character so that he would like it if, if she would sort of say, listen to this cloud. You'd go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it. And, you know, that would, he would love that. And I, I get it. You know, I get it. And also it was something very different from the Beatles and the way he'd, he'd lived the life. And I think he'd, he figured, I've done enough of that. And now, you know... So um, that, was, that was what it was. And at first, as I say, when he said he was leaving the group, it was um, very sad and very disappointing, I think, for the rest of us. And we thought, well, maybe, maybe we'll get it back together, you know, just let him go and do this for a year or something, and maybe you'll want to come back, you know. Um, but 
it was, you know, it was like a divorce. He, he actually did say, you know, it's like a divorce and it's kind of thrilling. You know, he was kind of thrilled by this whole idea that we're breaking up and he was going to go on to new pastures and do all sorts of new things, which he did. Um, for the rest of us, it was pretty disappointing, you know, because this was our life. We The only life we knew and now we'd lost the job. You know, they closed the factory. Did he ever express to anybody that he was ever sorry that he ended it? John, um, well, I think it wasn't so much that. Um, I think they would, th this guy, Alan Klein, came in, and this is where all the biz business trouble mm -hmm. started, and that was the three against one. They would all vote with Klein, and I wouldn't. So luckily, having done that, I kind of saved their lives. You know, they <laughs> would not, they, you know, they... Because, you know, we, we got it back, um, and Alan Klein went away, and they ended up suing him and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was, what was, the, what was the question? I've gone off on a tangent there. Did, did, did he ever express, or did you ever hear through other people him express any uh, uh, looking back like, oh, yeah. like, they, they, like he regretted it? Yeah. Um, like I say, it, it wasn't so much that, it, but they regretted the business thing. Right. Um, and then, having kind of got that out of the way um, and realized that I was right with that and, and that now we all still had what we'd earned and all our whole rights and Apple and everything. Um, I think when it settled down a bit, I think there, there definitely were a couple of times when the three of them came back and sort of said, should we get it together again? But by then, of course, I was pissed off. And I was a bit, no. I don't see why, you know. Um, so various little um, incarnations, so somebody would say, let's get it back, and the others would say no. Then somebody else would say, right. yeah. You know, so it, it never was the four of us again. At the same time. It was never the four of us said, we've got to do this thing. We'd all drifted off and, and we're doing other things, you know. Now I'm going to paint a very... Silly picture here. Uh, this is the completely silly. This is not reality at all. Go on. But in the way that people fantasize about the Beatles. So the, the image is, now you're all living in castles in the English countryside, mm. and you've all got hundreds of acres surrounding mm. you and sheep farms and everything, and you're all got a distance from the world, and all of you are in your house, and you're the one. McCartney is the one that picks up the phone and goes, okay, lads, tell them to get back in the studio. Time for another Time album. to record. That's and they, the three of them were in their house going, oh man, I, I got to drive all the way into town. Yeah. You know, no, they it really, was a bit, it was a little a bit like that. Yeah. Was it like that? It was a bit like that, yeah. Um, you know, I remember Let It Be, we hadn't, we hadn't done much. And I sort of thought, you know, it's time, we should, we should do stuff. Um, so ringing them up and they were a little bit, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, we'll go, we'll do it. So they did it, and I'm glad they did. And I'm glad I pushed the idea, you know. But they didn't mind. But sometimes they were a bit... I mean, they'd make fun of me. Oh, God, here he goes. He wants a job. Paul wants to work. You know, I go, yeah, I do. And come on, so do you. And I want really. to do it with you. I want to do it with you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it often was that, you know. And I, but uh, early days, it was just George Martin. The producer would just say, I want you to make a record. And we go, yeah, yes, sir. But later we got uh, more control kind of thing. And so then it would, it would be me to come up with some project or something. Sergeant Pepper was, was like an idea I'd had and I had to sort of coax everyone to sort of do it. Once they were behind the idea, it was fine. But see, it wouldn't, it would Never have been George ringing us all and saying, right. uh, George Harrison. He wasn't the instigator. No, or John, really. John, John only thing he instigated was um, the ballad of John and Yoko. Mm. When he sort of rang me up, he said, oh, I've got this song, I want to record it. You know, he says, I've booked some studio time. Would you come and do it? And uh, yeah, so I went round and just me and him made that record. What's your memory of recording with him? Like, like, would you like look at him and he would sing and he would perform and you'd be like, "Yeah, man, he's good. <laughs> he's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. No, with all the guys, um, it was, it was really, it was really good. I mean, you know, it, obviously, what what you do with memories, I think, is you sort of you delete little bad bits, 
you know, you just, you just, you, you, luckily. You edit. Luckily, the, yeah, luckily the nice bits are what you remember. So, yeah, I know, I, I have a lot of very fond memories of um, the guys doing various things, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I always think, when I go into Abbey Road, I always think of John singing Girl. Because for some reason that do. always comes back because I've got a very clear picture of him standing at the mic, saying, girl. <laughs> and that whole sort of with, you know, uh, drawing in the breath. Um, so I can picture him there doing that. So, yeah, and I admired it. I thought, oh, this is great, you know. I I, w I wouldn't go over and sort of, oh, you're so great. You know, right. It'd be just be a nice one, you know, great. But... Um, yeah, and that happened lots of times. And similarly, he was very cool to me um, in that respect, uh, particularly if I was having any kind of trouble um, with with a vocal or something. I've been sent down to redo a vocal or something that I wasn't quite getting. I remember uh, Kansas City, the, the Richard, Little Richard song, and I'd been talking to John weeks before and he said how do you do that voice you know that 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 little richard voice i said i don't know i said it's somehow it just comes out the top of my head and he said oh huh. so here's me i've i've it's not working and i'm trying to do kansas city and i'm struggling i'm at the mic <clears throat> kansas city <clears throat> and i can't get i can't get in the pocket you know so he comes down from the control room, we've been listening. He said, he comes up to me, he goes, remember, it comes out the top of your head. <laughs> I go, yeah. And then I do the take that you know as the Beatles take. Yeah. So, you know, we, 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 we admired each other, really. You know. The Beatles were fans of each other. Yeah. I love yeah. that. What did he like to do for fun? I mean, I'm assuming obviously the music itself was fun, but when he wasn't making music, what was he, what was he into? Well, he didn't play golf, <laughs> he didn't sail, he didn't ride a horse. What did he do? Um, I think just hang around at home by his pool, He'd go on holiday, he would like. Um, he wasn't a sportsman of any kind. No, not really. No, no. no John, John's sort of none of that. Um, you know, he, he was hopelessly impractical, which I thought was very endearing. You know, I mean, I wasn't, I'm, I'm terrible too. George was good. George was, was practical. George, in, in England, you have these big, funny three-point plugs for your electrics, mm -hmm. whereas here you just got these two, two little things. Um, but in England, if, if thing didn't work, you'd open, get your screwdriver, open the plug up, check the fuse and check the wires and stuff. And so I could do that. Because it was so easy. Um, John couldn't do that. He wouldn't know which wire went where. Um, he didn't drive, as I say, so any big car he had, which was, he had a big flash Rolls Royce and then he had it all painted psychedelic, but he would have a driver for that, you know. And he did, he did learn to drive, and he did drive Yoko up, uh, and the, the Yoko's kid up to Scotland. And because he crashed, he crashed, and they're all in all hospital for a couple of days. You know, so that was John. Um, so yeah, uh, hobbies. I don't really remember any, mm. but um, yeah, he would like to go on holiday and drink, drink and eat, drink and eat, read. He liked to read oh. um, a lot. You know, he was. He was a bit of a reader, um, and watch telly and watch films and stuff. Anybody that Lennon was a fan of when you were coming up? Yeah. Well, you know, it really went back to Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly. Before you. Jerry Lee Lewis, a little bit of Elvis, um, early Elvis, you know. Um, Before he joined the army. <laughs> Well, As they um, say. that is true, actually, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, he was a mad fan of that. And then Dylan later. He loved Bob Dylan. Um, yeah, but the thing, the point is, we all were. You know, that was the great thing. It wasn't one of us sort of said, oh, I like Dylan, and we're all going, oh, I don't like him. 
we had it all in common. And uh, that was one of the, the great things, really, is that um, it was like we were on a boat and we were all going the same direction. There was nobody wanted to go left or right. It was like, no, this is the way to go. So people we loved, um, we had in common. And it was just as well, because, you know, when John brought in uh, Come Together, it was really a Chuck Berry rip-off. And I had to sort of say to him, whoa, wang on, that's You Can't Catch Me. And he said, oh, oh yeah, it is actually. And so I had to like, wow, you know, calm him down and sort of say, we've got to do advice. this. We've got to do this a bit different, you know. And so we did the, like the arrangement that it, it is now. But the um, point I'm making is that I knew most of the songs he knew. So I could just say, that's You Can't Catch Me. And he wouldn't go, what do you mean? You know, he'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. He got it. He got caught at it. So that was a very good governing factor. Um, we could do that with each other, say, that, but isn't that, that's a bit like that song. Um, uh, because we knew everything in common.